Hi, everyone. My name is Barbara James, aka BJ, and I will be your host today for our Bible study time. Thank you so much to all of you for joining in from far and near church family and friends. And so I hope you will get some enjoyment as well as understanding from God's word on today. Before we get started, just let us bow our heads in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the understanding that you're going to give us on today. And please give us a heart to love each and every one. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, we are ready to go. Our lesson is about justice today, and it's coming not from the New Testament, but from the Old Testament. It's coming from 2 Samuel, beginning at the first verse, uh, verses 1 through 13. So look, go find the Bible. Get your Bible out. Put your Bible in your hands and turn to 2 Samuel. If you don't know where it is, just look in the table of contents. Turn to 2 Samuel and find the 12th chapter. I'm sorry, the, uh, yes, the 12th chapter. All right. So I'm going to start by reading the scriptures for you on today, but, oh my goodness, I almost forgot about my friend. I do have a friend that wants to join us today, and her name is Dolly. Dolly, say hi to everybody. Oh, wow, good. Dolly is my best friend in the whole wide world. Dolly and I do just about everything together. We're just like sisters. So Dolly is going to join us today, but Dolly is kind of shy. And at some point in time during the lesson, if you see Dolly trying to whisper something in my ear, it's something that she wants me to tell you. Okay, we're going to read the scriptures from uh, 2 Samuel, beginning at the 12th chapter, starting at the first verse. And I'm going to be reading my Bible. I'm going to be reading from the New Century Version, the NCB. All right. The Lord sent Nathan to David. And Nathan was a prophet and God appointed all of the prophets. He would find someone that he wanted and he trusted to go and tell different people what he said. And so Nathan had been chosen as a prophet. So David was a big, important king. So Nathan went to King David. And he told King David about a story that he wanted to tell him. So the Bible says, when Nathan came to David, he said, there were two men in a city. One was rich, but the other was poor. The rich man had many sheep and cattle. But the poor man had nothing except one little female lamb he had bought. The man fed the lamb and grew up with him and his children. He shared his food and shared his drink. He even let the little lamb sleep in his arms at night, like I do Dolly sometimes. Mm, Dolly just loves to cuddle, and she is just such a wonderful lamb. 
So it says that when a traveler stopped to visit the rich man one day, the rich man wanted to feed the traveler. But the rich man didn't take one of his own sheep or cattle. Instead, he took the lamb from the poor man. Oh, what? Oh, wow, Dolly says that's such a shame that that man had that one little sweet lamb and then the rich man is going to take that man's lamb so that he can feed the traveler that came to town. Let's see what happens. David, when as the man was telling, as Nathan was telling David the story, David became so angry that that rich man would take that poor man's little lamb and cook it. So David said, because that man had done that, he says, as surely as the Lord lives, the man who did that should die. He must pay for the lamb four times over for doing such a mean and evil thing. That rich man had no mercy, King David said. Well, guess what? David had no idea that God had told him all about King David himself. And God had told Nathan about how King David knew, had this man in his army named uh, Uriah, and he had Uriah killed because he wanted Uriah's wife. Such a terrible thing. And so when he had Uriah killed, he took, he married Uriah's wife. So if he had everything that God had given him, he had a kingdom, he had all kinds of animals, and he had all kinds of gold and Nathan told David, said that, and if you had wanted some more, God love you, loves you so much, he would have given you more. But for you to do this terrible thing after God was so nice to you, that was truly bad. He said, you are just like that rich man in the story and the way you treated that little poor man. Wait, hold on. Dolly wants to know if I'm going to let someone take her and cook her. No, Dolly, I'm not going to do that. I love you, sweetheart. You don't have to worry about that. Listen, today we have some key points to learn from this lesson. And our first point is that when we sin, when we do something wrong, guess who sees us? Not mommy, not daddy, not grandfather, not grandmother, not neighbor maybe, but someone else. There's someone else who always sees us. Oh, Dolly wants to answer that question. Dolly wants you to know it's God who always sees us. Yes, you are right, Dolly. Thank you. It's God who sees everything that we do. That is the first point. So when we make mistakes and when we sin, even though we may do it behind closed doors, like when your sister got all those A's on her report card, 
and the family gave her a big surprise party and you didn't get one because you sort of slacked up in your grades and you got so jealous and angry at your sister. Remember how you took a report card and took a pair of scissors and cut it up and then flushed it down the toilet and you acted as though you didn't know anything about it. You didn't know where her report card had disappeared to, but guess who saw you? That's right, God sees everything. So because he sees everything, he knows everything already. So when we sin, we actually sin against God because we're doing something that he does not want us to do. So when we sin, when we do those bad things or, or things that are not so nice, we sin against God and we don't want to do that. And when we sin against God, the second point is, is that we are going to be held accountable. We're going to be held accountable and there are consequences for our sins. There are always consequences, always. No matter how long we go without being punished, sometimes you see people that have done things and they are not punished for what they did. But never forget, there are always consequences, always things that are going to happen as a result of those sins that we committed. We want to remember also in the, after uh, Nathan finished telling David about the story, Nathan told him all about what he had done to cause God to be angry at him. And so he was mad at the rich man for the way he had acted towards the poor man, but he evidently for, had forgotten all about that sin that he had done. When he had Nuriah killed so that he could take his wife as his own. So Nathan told him when he found when he found out that Nathan had heard from God everything that he had done. King David admitted that he had sinned against God. He sinned against God and he was really sorry about it. And guess what? It says in the scripture, in verse 13, it says that the Lord, Nathan told King David, he said, the Lord has taken away your sin. And that meant that God had forgiven him. And even though he had forgiven him, there were still consequences that King David had to go through. And King David had a son to get sick. And that son ended up passing away. He never did get well. And that was a consequence of the sin that King David had done. So please remember that you can always ask for forgiveness, but if you don't want to suffer those, the consequences of that sin, it's best to do what? Oh, hold on a minute. You are right, Dolly. Dolly says it's always best just to try not to commit the sin. Try not to do that wrongness, especially when you think about there are going to be consequences for that. 
Wow. So this was a, a great way for God to let us know about what we should do, what we shouldn't do, how we should go about living our lives. God wants us to try and live a good life. And God wants us to treat everyone fairly. He wants us to be just towards others. He doesn't want us to treat one person one way and because that person is not important or because that person doesn't have a house to live in like we do or that person has uh, something uh, doesn't ride and their parents, uh, they don't have the kind of car that your parents have or they don't have the kind of jobs that's no reason as to why we should be unjust and treat that person unfairly as the rich man in the story treated the poor man. So we want to grow up learning that everyone is supposed to be equal. It doesn't matter how important you are. It doesn't matter if you are king or president mayor, senator, it doesn't matter what school you go to, how long you've been going there, it, uh, none of that matters when it comes to how we treat people. We want to, again, we want to treat people fair and we want to treat people without prejudice. We want to be, show justice toward each other. All right, so there, the key memory verse, as you go through the week and you think about those sins and how you're not gonna commit them, how you're not gonna um, commit to your sins. So what we wanna do is remember that we can always go to God and ask for his help, ask for his support. God will help us through all kinds of situations. We wanna to remember to treat people with the utmost respect and don't be unfair. And at this story time, we're gonna make it our motto to remember that it's always nice to be important, but it's even more important to be nice. So thanks again for joining us today and give a little shout out to Dolly here. Dolly, thank you so much for being such a nice helper. Oh, Miss BJ, I love you. I love you too, Dolly. Okay, so look, we'll see you next time. Have a beautiful week. And don't forget that the Lord has taken your sins away.